Hey there, in this video, we're going to take a look at the input widget and I'd like to show you some of its properties and ways in which you can configure it. For us to get started, head over to the widget section and I am going to drag in an input widget into the canvas. Over here, we can see some of its configurations. And the first we have here is to specify the data type of the input widget. This is the expected value we want the users to enter into the input widget. So by default, we have the text data type um, we can go ahead to configure it to um, accept numbers and it will only accept numbers. We can also go ahead to specify the data type as being of a password type and doing this would mask the entry entered by the user. And lastly, we can go ahead to specify um, the data type as an email type and this would only accept valid email input. We can also go ahead to configure the default text of the input widget. And this will be the default value that is prefilled into the input widget. We also have the ability to write JavaScript here. So we can go in to pull in the default value of the input widget from an API call or from another widget. We can also go ahead to specify the placeholder text of the input widget. And this is the text that is shown on the input widget right before the user um, enters in something into the input widget. So for example, we can say your email ID and we can see that your email ID is specified to the user. This serves as a guide to help the user know what um, to enter into the input widget. And um, talking more about validation, we can go in to specify a custom regex pattern that would um, validate whatever data the user enters into the input widget. And we can also supply um, custom error messages regarding the validation so as to help the user um, input a correct value. So for example, we can say um, wrong email ID. And whenever the user enters an invalid email such as example, which is not a valid email ID, um, we have a custom error message telling the user that he has entered a wrong email ID. We can also go ahead to um, toggle the required state of the input widget. And the required state is designed to work with the form widget. When this is set to true, it disables form submission until the user actually goes in and enter a valid input inside of the input widget. And we can also configure the visibility of the input widget by turning um, this toggle switch on and off. The same goes for the disabled state of the input widget. And we can drill down in to write some JavaScript to make this happen conditionally. We can also specify the input widget to reset on successful submit. So this will clear whatever input the user has entered when the input widget is submitted. And um, speaking about actions, the input widget has a couple of actions. And the first we can see here is the on text change action. And whatever action we specify here would be run whenever the value of the input widget changes. So for example, we can go in to specify any of these predefined actions. Um, and since we have the ability to write some JavaScript, we can go down to um, write some custom logic we want to be executed whenever the text of the input widget changes. And lastly, we have the unsubmit action. As a demo, I would like to show a message whenever um, the input widget is successfully submitted. And the value of that message will be hello in this case. So going back to the input widget and supplying a valid email ID, Submitting this by hitting the return key or the enter key would actually trigger the on submit action. And we can see the message I have specified showing up here. And we we'll also notice that the value of the input widget is reset. That is because we enabled reset on submit on the input widget. So this has been the input widget and I hope you found this video helpful.